Okay, it's time for another muscular system lesson. This one is all about muscle names. So let's get started. Remember, there are three types of muscle tissue. There's skeletal muscle tissue that attaches to your bones and uh, it attaches with these durable connective tissue uh, called tendons. Uh, skeletal muscle tissue is striated and voluntary. Voluntary meaning you control it. And then you have cardiac muscle tissue that's only in the heart. It is also striated and also has these cool little structures called, called intercalated discs. So they communicate smoothly with each other. But this is involuntary. And thank goodness, if you had to think about whether or not your heart was beating, that would be terrible pressure. And then smooth muscle tissue lines the walls of your internal organs. It helps food move through your digestive system, um, as an example. And smooth muscle tissue has no striations and is also involuntary, meaning you do not control it. So muscle names. There are over 650 muscles in the human body, but don't worry. The list you have to know is much shorter. So... Muscles are classified by their shape, by the number of origins, by their attachments, by their location, by their size, by their direction of fibers, by their function. Whew. All right, we're going to look at some examples and see exactly what I'm talking about. So we have the trapezius. All right, so the trapezius. It looks like a trapezoid. Hmm, wonder where it got its name. It extends from the skull. You can see it attached to the base of the skull. Down... The thoracic vertebrae, you can see it spanning um, where all of those ribs are attached and extends across the shoulders. So it makes that beautiful trapezoid shape. It is responsible for elevation and depression of the scapula and it also helps to bend and raise your head. Okay, so trapezius, named according to its shape. Now we have the sterno Clydomastoid. I don't know. That's just one of my favorite muscles. What a fantastic name. Sternocleidomastoid is named for its attachment point. So it attaches to the sternum. It attaches to the clavicle. That's the clido part. So sterno, sternum, clido, clavicle, and mastoid. Well, where's that? Well, that's the mastoid process, a little part that sticks out from the temporal bone of your skull. And what is the sternocleidomastoid responsible for? Well, it's some flexion and rotation of the head to the opposite side. Elevates, supports the head so you can turn and nod your head. All right, so the sternocleidomastoid. Now the deltoid. It is also named for its shape like the trapezius. And the deltoid is like the Greek letter delta. Okay. It defines those rounded corners of your shoulder. You can see um, in your shoulder area and kind of looks sort of like shoulder pads, all right? So it's the shoulder pads for your skeleton and it allows circumduction of the arm. So many movements, so it's abduction, it's adduction, it's rotation, okay? It's flexion, it's a whole bunch of movements. So really the deltoid is responsible for so much movement at the joint where your arm attaches um, to your uh, torso, so in that ball and socket joint. The rectus abdominis. Now this one is named for um, the way the muscle fibers align. So rectus means straight. So these fibers literally go straight um, down um, your abdomen. So they laterally go straight down from your sternum down to the pubis, part of your pelvic bone. Um, and there's these three to four tendinous little intersections, which allows you to have the appearance of abs, well, if you have them. Um, and the rectus abdominis allows you to move your torso. And think when you do your sit-ups or when you bend down, you can feel that contraction of those muscles. So which muscle is shaped like the Greek letter delta? You remember? Okay, that was the deltoid. All right, then we have the biceps and the triceps. Now, you've probably heard of these, but you might not have known that it was really biceps, brachii, and triceps, brachii. And the brachii part is because it's your arm. So the biceps brachii is on the anterior side of your upper arm, okay? And the bi means two, so it has two origins, so it attaches in two points, okay? 
And the biceps radii is responsible for flexion like this. Okay, responsible for flexion like this. Also, it's responsible for having to do with some of the supination of your forearms. So remember, supination, pronation, supination. All right. And then we have the triceps brachii, okay, right here. It's on the posterior side of your upper arm. And it's tri because it has three origins. And it's responsible for extension of your arm, like this, extension of your arm. And you have the quadriceps, and also named for the number of origins, right, quad, four. There's four muscles, actually, that are part of this big muscle group. But I'm not having you remember the names of each of the muscles so for that. Um, it's located on the anterior side of your thigh, and it's responsible for extension, rotation of the knee, and also a bunch of movements at the hip joint, okay? So what part of the leg are the quadriceps located? Well, that would be, remember, on the anterior side of your thigh. And then we have the gluteus maximus and gluteus medius. And those muscles are named based on their size, okay? So gluteus, it's your butt, okay? Gluteus maximus is literally the biggest muscle in your body. And it's uh, the main extensor of your hip. It allows circumduction of your hip, allows most of the motion um, where your, uh, that ball and socket joint is at your hip. And then you have the gluteus medius, and um, it's between, we have the maximus, the medius, and the minimus, okay? Um, so the medius is in between, and it helps to abduct. Remember, abduct was like this big angle, so it helps to abduct um, the hip. It also helps to rotate it, and together it works with the gluteus maximus and the gluteus minimus to allow all that movement in the hip. So they're kind of a team. They work together. Now we have the sartorius. Okay, so it's a close call. I also love this muscle. This is such an interesting muscle. It is the longest muscle in your body, and it's really long and thin, and it's superficial, meaning it's pretty close to the surface of your skin, and it wraps around. You can see that attachment. It attaches from um, the pelvis all the way down your femur and then wraps around, okay, on your lower leg, goes past your knee. It allows you to cross your leg when you're in a seated position, but also allows a bunch of other movements of your knee and your thigh. But focus on, it's going to allow you to cross your leg in a seated position and also allow a whole bunch of movements re um, related to your um, thigh and your knee. And then we have the hamstrings. Uh, the hamstrings are three muscles. So they're located on the opposite side of the quadriceps. So it's on the posterior side of the thigh. And it's responsible for flexing the knee. So remember, flex like this. So responsible for bending the knee like this. Um, and some of the movements at the hip as well. Now, the hamstring, again, made up of three muscles. But don't worry. You won't have to learn the names of them. Just that um, the group of three is the hamstrings. And it's on the um, posterior side of your thigh. All right. So now, ready? Whoa. These are the muscles. Now, remember, 650. So this is going to be a relatively short list. Tendons attach muscles to bones. So do you see all that white stuff that you see in the picture? Those are the tendons. That's the tendinous um, tissue that's going to be helping to attach those muscles to the bones. Some of the, that, those tendons you can't see in the picture because they'll be hidden under other muscles. Um, but anytime you see that white, it's either fascia, just loose, connect, some connective tissue, or it's going to be specifically a tendon. All right. We have 206 bones. And over 650 muscles, right? But again, remember I told you we're not going to learn them all. The quadriceps, remember I told you made up of four muscles. In case you were curious, those names, you can see them right there. But again, I'm not having you memorize them. And then we have the hamstrings made up of three muscles. And you can see the names there. But again, don't have to remember those names. So which names do you have to remember? All right, let's see. So we have an anterior view and a posterior view. So we need the biceps brachii, the brachioradialis. So that's going attaching from the upper arm down to the radius. Look at the names, brachioradialis. The deltoid, we already talked about. The external obliques, those are ones on the side that allow some rotation um, of your torso like that. We have the flexor carpi. 
So right here, it's going to allow you to do this. Flex your wrist. You can feel them contract when you do this. Flex your wrist. Frontalis, right here, forehead. Masseter, right here. That's going to allow you to move your jaw. Mentalis, on your chin. Remember, the mental region is your chin. The orbicularis oculi, that's around your eye, circular. The orbicularis oris, around your mouth. Just imagine I'm circling, can't see it through my mask. The pectoralis major, okay, your pecs, most people have heard of that. The rectus abdominis, which we already talked about. The quadriceps, four muscles we already talked about. Sartorius, right, that longest wraparound muscle. We have the sternocleidomastoid that we talked about already. We have the temporalis. Remember your temporal bone? So the temporalis muscle over here. We have the tibialis anterior. So think about this anterior and tibialis means tibia. So it's near the tibia. Uh, you have your Achilles tendon. That's the only tendon I'm going to have you remember the name of. Um, it's attached to a, um, a muscle, um, but you should know where that tendon is in the posterior part of your ankle. Uh, the hamstring, again, that's three separate muscles. We have the extensor carpal. So that is on this side. It's going to allow you to extend. So you can feel when you do this with your wrist, you can feel those muscles right here contracting. We have the gastrocnemius. That's your calf muscle. That C hidden in there is what reminds me that it's the calf muscle. We have the gluteus maximus, which we talked Um, we have the soleus muscle, okay, um, which kind of wraps around um, the outside of your gastrocnemius muscle. It's kind of hidden by most of it. We have the trapezius, that trapezoid, and the triceps brachii back here, the triceps brachii. And there you have it. Those are all the muscle names. Well, not all 650, just the ones you need to know.